Oh. Oh, Elaine. Yeah. Kramer, you look terrible. Yeah. Look, I need the keys to your apartment. I gotta take a shower. What's wrong with your shower? There's no water pressure. Why don't you just go see Jerry? No, Jerry's got nothing. Newman's got nothing. You're the only one I know who's got the good stuff, and I need a bad baby because I feel like I got bugs crawling up my skin. Now, you gotta help me out. Not on my watch! What's the I will have you turn in my office into a den of iniquity! You have Get your fix somewhere! Hey, wet gone, Peter! You're out of control. You need help. Huh? I know what you're going through. I, too, once fell under the spell of opium. It was 1979. I was traveling the Yangtze in search of a Mongolian horsehair vest. Oh, I had got to the market after sundown. All of the clothing traders had gone, but a different sort of trader still looked about. Just a tasty scent. <laughs> that was all it took. Mr. Peterman, I don't know what's going on here. I am not addicted to anything. Oh, Elaine. <laughs> the toll road of denial is a long and dangerous one. The price? Your soul. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you have till five o'clock to clear out your desk. You're fired. You know, like Kramer, we all want the good stuff. We all want to, to live, right? To really live, to be fully alive, making the most of life, yet we all struggle to do that. So every year, we make these New Year's resolutions. We think if we just try harder or if we press the reset button, it will be different in the new year. But did you know 92% of New Year's resolutions fail by February? See, and most of us, like Elaine, would claim that we're not addicted to anything. Yet, we are stuck. We're stuck in a life that we know and hope could be better. And no matter what we do, we just keep landing back in the same place over and over again, stuck. You know, why? Because trying harder, or what we would say in the recovery world, white knuckling it, it just doesn't last. It doesn't work. Well, you're not alone. Or maybe you are. According to a study done in 2014, of all the nations on the entire planet, the United States is the most lonely place to be. We have the highest percentage of one-person households on the entire globe. Studies have shown that the number of close friends that we have is falling. In addition, most of us spend little time attending social gatherings or any of these social functions these days. And church attendance, it's at historic lows. And most people don't take the time or effort to get involved in any other types of groups. In the United States today, more than half of all couples move in together before they get married. And did you know the divorce rate for couples that live together first is actually significantly higher than those that don't? Yet, America has the highest divorce rate on the planet by a wide margin. And, and in this desperate attempt for us to find love and human companionship, we've turned to social media, things like Facebook and Instagram. We can have thousands of friends and yet still be lonely. Others of us deal with the loneliness by recklessly indulging into food or drugs or gambling or shopping or porn or other vices that soon become addictions. See, we're fundamentally an unhappy nation. And it's reflected in the fact that we actually lead the world in antidepressant use. The United States also ranks number one 
in the world in illegal drug use. And we rank in the top five in pornography addiction as well. See, we're all lonely and addicted to something. And searching for something to fill, fill that void in us. But that search, that something we're looking for, it keeps us stuck. So how can you get unstuck in a big, life-changing way? How can you find the freedom from what's held you back? And what does God have to do with it? Well, that's what this new series, Restore, is all about. Maybe it's finding freedom from your past. Maybe it's freedom from a hurt or a hang-up. Something that's been keeping you stuck. Maybe it's freedom from an addiction. Whatever it might be, the goal for us in 2018 is to get unstuck. You know, not very many years ago, I was stuck. I mean, I was really stuck. I was stuck in, in bitterness and resentment. And I probably would have been fine um, staying there, except that all that bitterness and resentment caused me to be angry. And not just angry, but full of rage. I would get angry at the flip of a switch. I had some deep wounds that I'd never really addressed. One of those unaddressed deep wounds was when my first wife was killed in a car accident. I was immediately thrust into being a single parent. And I had a business, and so I had to continue to work. And I, I just really never had an opportunity to process those hurts. Never really dealt with the grief. I just stuffed it. So that's what us guys do, right? We just stuff that stuff and move on. And then on top of that, I wasn't a follower of Jesus. And so uh, I, I just made a series of bad decision after bad decision. I remarried, and it wasn't long before I discovered my then wife had been having an extramarital affair, and that led to our divorce. See, I was stuck, and I was angry. I was angry at her that I was betrayed. I was angry at myself that in some way I didn't measure up. And then that anger would just cause me to get mad at anything. I would get mad at my kids for not chewing uh, with their mouth closed. <laughs> Chew with your mouth closed. Nobody wants to see your food. I would get mad at going through the drive through at McDonald's. I thought this was supposed to be fast food. What's taking so long? I would get mad at people driving on the strip. What'd you do? Come here on vacation and forget how to drive. I still do that one. Wait a minute. <laughs> but my life was just being consumed by anger and rage and bitterness and resentment. So I'm going to tell you something profound, something I learned. So you'll need to write this down because this is very tweetable. <laughs> but bitterness and resentment is like drinking a bottle of poison, hoping that the other person will die. Bitterness and resentment is like drinking a bottle of poison, hoping the other person dies. We're going to talk a lot about this in the next couple of weeks. I was so consumed by rage, I finally came to a crossroad, and I realized it was going to destroy me, or I would have to find help. I finally decided that I didn't want to drink the bottle of poison any longer, and I turned to God for help. See, I couldn't fix myself, but God could. I can't, God can and here's what I've found over the years since then. There's a, a quality of life and freedom that's available to us. It's actually all around us. It's what we want. It's what we desire. 
It's what we were made for. And we get these little glimpses of it. Like when you're driving down a scenic road on a summer day, the windows are down, the music's blasting, your favorite song, right? You have no troubles, no worries. You feel free in your soul. You're singing at the top of your lungs, even though you can't keep a tune. But you, you feel alive. Your soul is bursting with life. See, it's the, the life we all long for. Free from worries, free from troubles, free from fear. For a short moment, we feel alive. I mean, it's the very reason that Jesus came to our messy world. But there's an adversary that doesn't want us to experience that kind of life. He's a, a real enemy that wants us to stay lonely and addicted and stuck. Look what Jesus says in the New Testament of the Bible. And if you don't know this, there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. And the Old Testament is about life on earth before Jesus. And the New Testament is about life on earth with Jesus and after Jesus. And if you don't have a Bible, we want to give you a free Bible. We've got Bibles over here on the shelf. You can grab one. Uh, somebody can give you one after church. We want you to take that with you. If you uh, downloaded that app, there's a Bible in there. And if you don't have one, we're going to put all the verses up on the screen, so not a big deal. But we're going to look in the New Testament book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. And here's what Jesus says. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and life to the full. See, Jesus came to bring us life and a fullness of life. It's called the kingdom of God. It's a, a quality of life that we long for. It's a way of living in this messed up, broken world. It's actually been described as the present participation in a future possibility. It's kind of a, a paradox. The kingdom of God is both present and something yet to come. See, we must love God, love ourselves, and love our neighbors. Even our neighbors, that might be our enemy. It's a quality of, of living that is always available to us. You know, and I've seen and experienced this kingdom of God and it's reality. It's why I do what I do. It's what keeps me going. Little glimpses of how good life is when we're in alignment with God's will and ways. But I'm also amazed at how quickly it just slips away from me. See, the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy that life from you and me. The enemy doesn't want us to experience it. So how do we experience the kingdom of God? How will it bring us a greater experience of life and freedom? That's what this Restore series is all about, to help us break free of the things keeping us from experiencing this full life of freedom. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the 12 steps to spiritual growth. At first glance, many of you may look at them and think, I don't get it. I don't see how this can really benefit me. I'm not addicted to anything. Or some of you may even know the content of the 12 steps and still don't get it. You don't see how it works. But the real question I think for you is, in 2018, do you want to experience freedom? And if so, then just be open during this series as we talk about these 12 steps. See, the 12 steps are really just biblical principles for spiritual growth, and they form a pattern for living, a way of living and thinking and viewing life from a whole new perspective. These 12 steps are not just for dealing with addictions or recurring patterns. They are a way to live that will allow God to bring spiritual growth into your life no matter how long you've been following Jesus. See, we all have issues that hold us back and keep us stuck. 
things we are powerless to change on our own. Things that need to change because they are robbing us of life. And every new year, you know, we try to change these things. We set these resolutions. We try to do it on our own and over and over again we fail. See, I can't, but God can. I'm powerless left to my own will and ways. Paul, a a first century follower of Jesus and church planner, talks about his own struggles in the New Testament of the Bible in the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 18 and 19. And I know that nothing good lives in me. That is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. I bet a lot of us can identify with Paul in that statement. See, he admits he's powerless. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't do it. But God can. So what's the one thing that you are powerless to control? What's one thing you have struggled with over and over? And it can't be a person. You can't be like, the only problems I have is my mother-in-law, my boss, and my wife. Well, the 12 steps, get rid of those? No, you can't, can't do that. No, your joy is not dependent on other people. See, that's an important point. I don't want you to miss it. If someone is ruining your life, it's because something needs to change in you. That doesn't mean something doesn't need to change in them. But changing them is not your business. Letting God change you is your business. So what is it that you need to find freedom from? What's the one thing you need to be unstuck from? Can't think of one? Let me help you. How about, I'm not one of those people. I know some of you are thinking this already. And what's funny is that most every person who has ever overcome an addiction, no matter how slight or how bad, has thought, it's not that bad. I can control it. It's not like I'm one of those people, like Rick. I mean, he's bad, not me. So if you're thinking, I'm not sure this applies to me, Can you say denial? Seriously, think again. Most people have secret addictions they deny. Things like they can't stop lusting, can't stop looking at porn. You drink every night or most nights. You're addicted to rage or impatience. It just takes you over and you can't help yourself. Maybe it's food. You overeat or you think about eating or not eating all the time. Maybe it's work, you can't shut it off. Maybe it's, uh, guys, you can't be without one. In fact, you've never gone a year without a relationship. Or maybe you're controlling and trying to fix all the people around you. And then when we see people that are in stuck places, but they can't admit it, they blame and they make excuses, that angers us, doesn't it? I mean, we get kind of mad. We get disgusted and judgmental towards such proud, arrogant people who won't admit their problems and grow up. But have we ever considered that maybe others see us the same way? Maybe I have stuck places that I'm not seeing. Maybe that's why it makes me so upset with others when I see their problems. When I see them avoid the issue or their pride keeps them stuck. Maybe I wanna push them away because they reflect something that I don't wanna face in me. See, we're all stuck somewhere, just none of us wanna admit it. And when we do realize we're stuck, we blame, we make excuses. It's all these bad women I keep marrying. It's my job, it's my boss. It's always the circumstances, but never me. 
And I get that. I, I've done that. I did that for a long time. And then I even changed my circumstances. And the problem would still follow me. And I repeated this pattern again and again. And you know what I finally realized? Everywhere I go, there I am. The common denominator of all my bad circumstances was me. And guess what? Everywhere you go, there you are too. And the common denominator is not your circumstances. It's you. But this is actually good news. Because you can't always change your circumstances or the people around you. But you can change you with God's help. And when you do that, that can change everything. See, and if we're going to get any momentum towards lasting freedom, we must face down denial. You can't get help if you don't recognize that you need help. And the Bible calls that pride. It's what keeps us stuck. It's spiritual blindness. The truth is, every one of us needs help. And that's why the Bible teaches us in the New Testament book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 through 10, if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and, to, and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Every single person, every one of us here, including me, has an area in our life where God wants to set us free. If you really think there's nothing serious in your life that needs changing, then uh, that there's nothing holding you back, then do this truth test this week. Go uh, ask the people that you live with or the people that know you best what they think. Say, hey, my church is doing a series called Restore, and I'm supposed to ask those who know me best to be completely honest. Do you see any addictions or behaviors or hang-ups or character defects that are holding me back from being the best version of me? And just see what they say. But don't get angry with them because you asked. <laughs> just bring what they tell you next week as we dive into this more. See, we're going to look at each one of these steps. And then I'm going to give you guys some work to do throughout the week. And if you decide to do the work, which I, I hope you do, you will see God do an incredible work in your life you will see changes begin to take place. I guarantee it or your money back. <laughs> Some of you are thinking, I, I already experienced freedom. I've been a Christian a long time. You're thinking, this doesn't apply to me. The 12 steps are for people with serious problems. Well, actually, the, the steps, the 12 steps came out of the recovery movement of the 1930s but they're actually as old as the Bible. In fact, Bill Wilson, who wrote down the steps, acknowledged that they came from the pastor of Calvary Church, Dr. Sam Shoemaker, who led a small group movement called the Oxford Group, where Bill W. came to faith. Dr. Bob, the co-founder of the steps, emphasized that the steps came from studying the Bible. The reason the steps work is because they lead people to have a spiritual experience of God. See, at the root of these steps, they are simply spiritual practices that allow the God who loves us to live his life in and through us. See, listen to what the founders of the 12 steps, how they describe it. The great fact is just this and nothing less that we have had deep and effective spiritual experiences which have revolutionized our whole attitude toward life, toward our fellows, and toward God's universe. The central fact of our lives today is the absolute certainty that our creator has entered into our hearts and lives in a way which is indeed miraculous. He has commenced to accomplish these things for us which we could never do by ourselves. See this 
12-step path is simply a way to live a full life, to live the life that God intended you to live, full of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and truthfulness and self-control. So we're going to look at these 12 steps, and and we're not going to apply them just to addictive behaviors, but any harmful behavior that ultimately does damage to us, to others around us, and our relationship with God. So it doesn't matter if you are a meth user or just a grumpy, joyless person, you can see change for the better. And so some of you may be thinking, I've worked these steps numerous times. You know the Bible, you read it, you pray, and your first inclination is thinking, been there, done that. Well, Let me tell you, I reworked a version of these steps a couple of months ago. This past year for me was kind of a challenging year. Uh, I I realized that something was just going on in me, and and I I took a hard look at my life, and and I realized I was was really tired. I was joyless. I I didn't have any desire. I didn't have any energy. Didn't feel like I had even some uh, spiritual strength. I was lacking love. At first, I I didn't really know uh, what was wrong, but I had to admit that something wasn't right. I was lacking this growing sense of joy and love for life that God's spirit wants to produce in me. And we see what these things are In the New Testament book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, this is the kind of life God wants to produce in us. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so by working these steps, I began to experience these things again. In fact... That's why I'm so excited about 2018. I want to see other people start to experience that fullness of life like I am. So are these things, this list of um, fruit, are these things growing or diminishing in your life? Are you truly free or is something holding you back? Sometimes... You know, you don't even know what's keeping you stuck. You know, at first, I didn't recognize it. You can't name it. But you can look at that list of those fruits, and you can see that you are missing it. You can see that you're not experiencing these things. And for some of you today, you may think, I'm too far gone. You know, I'm the opposite of those people or I already experienced freedom, you're thinking, there's no way, I'm just too far gone. You're thinking, Brian, you don't know what I've done, how terrible my past has been, that there's no hope for me. I've tried and tried. I'm in a possible case. Well, if that's you, I want you to know that that is a lie. That is a lie from the enemy that wants to steal, kill, and destroy. There are people sitting around you right now who felt the same way at one point, and they found life and freedom. Sitting around you are people who were once hopelessly addicted to meth, to heroin, to alcohol, to porn. People who couldn't forgive themselves for, for the abortion they had, for the affair that they had committed, for the crime they'd covered up, for the children they'd harmed for the sexual thoughts they never thought they could overcome. Sitting around you are people who had such horrible things done to them, they felt forever scarred, stained, marked, evil, hopeless, but they found freedom, they found hope, they found forgiveness. See, no one is too far gone for God. That's how great he is. Paul goes on to tell us about God's promise of that in Romans chapter 7, verse 38. And see, when it's a a promise from God, all we can do, we have no choice other than 
to accept it and believe it. So Paul tells us in verse 38, I, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. See, and what the founders of the 12 steps realized is that all we need is God's help. We were never meant to do life apart from the creator of life. See, remember what I quoted earlier, what I read from the big book? Our creator has entered into our hearts and lives in a way which is indeed miraculous. He has commenced to accomplish those things for which we could never do by ourselves. So whether you are spiritually skeptical or even an atheist, or if you've been a, a Christ follower for decades, if you will stick with us during this series, do some of the work on your own, uh, take these next steps over the next few weeks, you will see growth. Not only that, I'm confident you will find freedom and relief and a new vision of life that will blow the doors off anything you've ever experienced before. So, here's your assignment. On your chair is this restore paper. And it's, it's got some next steps on it. This paper will help you identify maybe that one thing that is keeping you stuck. So I want you to find one to two people that you trust to work this with you. Or better yet, come to our Restore Recovery Group uh, every Sunday night at 5 p.m. We have a group that'll be kicking off again tonight at 5, from 5 to 6.30. And every night there is teaching on, re on the recovery principles. And then they'll, they'll gonna break up into a smaller men's group and a smaller women's group uh, where you will get to be in this group of people and they will become your friends. And there will be confidentiality, and you can talk about the struggles and, and things that are keeping you stuck, and you will realize you're not alone. You, you can get loved on and prayed for and even get fed. There'll be food there. So I hope you'll join us every Sunday for that from 5 to 6.30. And if you want more information on Restore and what that kind of looks like and, and uh, how it flows, there's going to be some people over at this table right after service today that would love to talk with you, answer any questions you might have. And, and you may have noticed on the back side of this sheet is the actual 12 steps. And so that's kind of what we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks. So... Why not make 2018 the best year ever? Amen. Tell God, I can't, but you can. So the band's going to come up here, and they're going to play a couple more songs to God and for God. And you can sit, you can stand, we'll put the words up on the screen. We don't pressure you to give here. Uh, we don't pass an offering bucket or anything like that. But if Gateway's your church home, and, um, you know, we want you to help us further the mission. That's part of the 12 steps. So if Gateway's your church home, um, we give out of the gratitude that God's already done for us. Back there in the back, there's some buckets. You can put your gift in there. You can go online. We have giving stations set up. If you're just visiting us, just checking things out, just hang in there. Come back 2018. Amen. This is just our gift for you. If you'd like somebody to pray with you and for you today, we've got people over here at the uh, garage door and there'll be people over here to my left, your right, that would love to do that for you as well. And don't leave just yet. Engage in these songs. Ask Jesus to reveal to you that one thing that's holding you back, that one thing that's keeping you stuck, and then ask him for the courage to work these steps.
Listen to the band.